gentlemen, welcome back to the Arctic Gaming Experience 2022. We are here again for the final round of the group stage. And so far, things have been mighty exciting here in the hall where we saw in the last round, Tween looking like one of the favorites. Absolutely. Some players have really showed dominance here recently, and it's going to be interesting to see if they can keep that up here in the final match that's going to be happening soon. We are looking at some of the top, top competitive players in all of Trekmania. And there's a lot of storylines at play. You have the favorite battle between Carl Jr. and Tween. They've both gone three wins out of three possible. You have the battle for the top eight spots where players like Afi and Massa right now find themselves at the cutoff. McQuattro as well was able to give himself at least a chance at getting there himself now with six points. There's a lot of things at play and a lot is up in the air before yeah. this final game. So what, what, which storyline are you looking at the most now ahead of this? Well, I'm always a big fan of underdogs, right? I'm a big fan of the people that you don't expect to get the furthest, but then they make it like last second clutch, they get home with the victory. But it is, I think uh, there's a wise guy that always says, it's not smart to bet against Carl Jr. It's really not, that's <laughs> the problem. Like the underdog stories are fun, we love them, we love to see someone overcome impossible odds, but yeah. often those odds tend to just be impossible. So we'll see if anyone can do it. Uh, we ha do have the results of round three that we should be putting up here so you can see them, and we can take a look at how the other matches unfolded backstage as well. So starting with match one, we had Carl Jr. winning ahead of Enner, Daska and Kappa getting third and fourth. We had match B where Pack one ahead of Afi, Coco and Energize getting third and fourth. Then we had Bren, Binks, Snow and Rossi in that order in match C. And match D, which we saw on the stage, Tween, McQuattro, Massa and Spam. Now what that does to the overall rankings, if we have a look at that, is the following. We see Carl and Tween, 12 points each, pretty much guaranteed to be in the playoffs. Also Pack and Bren with 11 should be in there, but then it starts to get a bit more unclear. Yes. And it's important to know that Carl Jr. and Tween with 12 points, that's 12 out of 12 points. They could not possibly have done better, and they've been just demolishing the competition as we've seen them. Tween was a little bit close to losing one of those races right there, but he did come out on top. He did, and if he keeps the second seed there, he will avoid playing against Carl Jr. in the semifinals, which is, you know, incredibly, incredibly important. important that you don't want to face Carl yeah. in the semi. Uh, and then we have that battle for that eighth spot where you saw Masa's at seven, and then you have uh, Enner, McQuattro, and I believe it is Deska all at six points. Yeah. And Offie's not safe either. Every single point is going to matter in this last matchup. And remember, this next match we're going to see is the final one. It's the last chance you have at making up that last bit of ground to see if you can get in to the playoffs tomorrow. And if you have any, like, anything left in the tank, anything you haven't shown yeah. yet, anything you feel has been left on the table, you gotta use it now, you gotta... All right, so I'm, I'm gonna ask you this, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's say you have a tournament. You play Trackmania for six hours straight, right? Are you best in the start, where you're nervous, but you're fresh? Like, you come, you're, you sit down, you play the game, you, you're all fresh, you just slept, right? Or but you're nervous because you, you didn't train mm -hmm. yet. Or are you better six hours in where you've been playing for so long, you're kind of tired, but you're warm, you're ready? I think it depends on my performance. If I was playing bad, I'd hate to play this last match feeling like you know things are going against me. If I was playing good, I'd be ready, I'd be hyped to play All right. uh, as the day moves on. But I think my, my peak performance would be right off, just the first two matches and then I might like, get worse. That's fair, because I feel like I've seen some of the players here where the first time they, uh, they played a match, let's say the match where Bren uh, had a rough start against uh, Pack, but then later in the match, he came back, bounced back, and even got that win. And I think that's because he started off a little bit nervous, a little bit, even though he was fresh, even though it was the first couple of games, he needs to get warm, he needs to get ready. Yeah, and we will see in the last round now if he and others can keep that up. We are going to be watching the fourth match coming up in this last round. We can have a look at the brackets and see which matches will be played. We're taking a look at match D on the stage, and we're starting by introducing the player that we've been keeping a close eye on so far throughout the day. It is Tween, currently second place on the rankings. Give him one more good round of applause as he takes to the stage.
Now, between, through the beautiful language of mathematics, we have figured out that you should be reaching playoffs, but there is also that thing of getting on the opposite side of the bracket of Carl, uh, and that is perhaps what you're looking for now, but what would it take to get there against these players? Well, all three of those players that are up against me will put up a fight, I know about that, and uh, I think they're more, uh, well, more motivated to <laughs> really take the first place because maybe some of them are like very close to making it to top eight. So uh, yeah, I'll just have to, you know, keep playing my, my game and uh, not get uh, too flustered about that and uh, just trust the process, I guess. Trust the process. Once again, best of luck, Tween. Feel free to take your spot. And then we're gonna say hello to a familiar face. Once again, a player who looks to be very close to getting into that top eight and stay there. Give a warm welcome back to Bren. <laughs> Bren, it's looking really good for you right now. How are you feeling in this moment? I'm feeling excitement, man. Uh, I mean, I just enjoy playing matches. I'm playing pretty good so far. So I just want to enjoy the last match and just have fun, you know? I'm going to let you enjoy that last match. Give it up for Bren. <laughs> and now let's say hello to a player we haven't seen on stage yet today, but a player I think you're going to enjoy watching. It is one of the top Trackmania talents coming out of Switzerland, and that is Uffy the World Championship finalist in 2021, the second place in Trackmania Grand League. Now, Afi, this is an important match that decides whether you reach playoffs or not. What thoughts do you have going into this and what is going to be your strategy to try to win it? I'll try to keep on playing like I did until now. Uh, try to grab uh, first, second or, or third place. Maybe it will be enough, maybe not. I'll try my best and we'll see what happens. Let's hope that it goes your way here. Feel free to take your spot. And the crowd, give them a warm welcome. And we have one last player to introduce. A newer face in the big scene of Trackmania. 23-year-old French player playing for Project Conquerors. And he's going to come up here on the big stage showing us just why he belongs here. Give a warm welcome to Enner. Once again, we have a really stacked lineup coming up here. It is the final match. How are you feeling about this match? Yeah, uh, first matches didn't go so well, so uh, I hope I'll be able to do better uh, to qualify for tomorrow. We, we uh, all think you can do it. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. <laughs> Feel free to sit down. Now, it is the last match. You need to win. You need to get second place to pretty much guarantee that spot. It can get very close if players like Mossa uh, on the other side of the bracket here will be able to win their match. And then we will have to see what happens. But yeah. we're going to give it all on the stage. The players are going to give it all. Let's get into the last match of the group stage. Last match! <laughs> now, as per tradition, Janek. If you had to make a very difficult call here, who would be your favorite for this final game between Tween, Afi, Bren, and Enner? Okay, so it's very hard for me to say who my favorite is, but I think it is a safe bet to say Tween. And sometimes you want to go for the safe bet. That's true, but as you said, you know, the other players might be a little bit more motivated. They might have a little bit more reason to push because he's already made it. He's on the other side. You're right. I think with that, be, with that in mind, we do have people like Enner that really want to push hard. I also think that Bren, uh, seeing the performance of the last match he did on stage, has a really strong possibility of taking it home. And then Afi, you know, who finds himself in that seventh, eighth range, needs this win. He really needs to push it all. And he's coming off of a good performance in the previous match, too. He's going to try to keep that momentum going. I think Afi might win this. You think Afi might win this? That's a very, very... I mean, I'm going to go with Bren. So you say, you say Afi, I say Bren. We're going to bet who buys dinner. What does the crowd say? <laughs> Who's your favorite? 
I couldn't hear anything. No, I couldn't hear anything I either. just heard tears, but I think... Let's, just, let's just assume they agree with us, because yeah. uh, definitely we are the smart casters, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But as, as we've said, the, the points that we just saw up on the screen a second ago, those are the points that are now. We have three other matches that are being played in the backstage, and depending on those matches, those points will all change, right? They will. It could be, you know, if one of the players backstage has a great match, that could flip things. Think about Deska, who's mm -hmm. currently on the same points as uh, Anner here with six points. Mikuatro also playing backstage, currently on six total. And then you have Afi here with seven total. So uh, however these players stack up, we could have like a complete flip on those bottom Absolutely. positions. They were so close to each other, everybody there in the... Uh, in the range where you're just about to get eliminated. So it's going to be very interesting to see the standings right after this match. It is, and we are in to the warm-up here. We're starting on Nurlam as the first map in the match, a track defined by pretty high speed, one of the fastest tracks in the, uh, in the map pack because of this full speed section here. And then it also has that characteristic plastic part where we see different lines near the ending. Yeah, that characteristic plastic part has been a place where we've seen people be able to just overtake each other or at least change up the standings a lot. And also right here, when they jump down into the grass section, if you jump lower than the others, you can get a straighter trajectory. Ooh, as you see Tween right there, clipping the corner of the plastic part. That's the dangerous part of it. If you do it well, you get a really inside line, but you can risk it quite a lot. You certainly can. And let's see what time Tween will do in the warm up here. We know times of 59 are possible. It looks fast. And that is a 59 indeed. So, yeah, breaking the one minute there is really. If you uh, do that, you are incredibly fast. You're bound to win or get yeah. second. It's hard to keep up with that reliably. But we are into it. The first round here of the last match. One more time. Can we hear it, man? I for the players. <laughs> Give them your energy. They need it to get into the top eight to have a chance at competing in the playoffs for the $30,000 prize pool here. And right now is when they're trying to give their all. Enner and Uffy are the ones that need the points the most. Between is, again, the fastest player here in the early parts of the round. Yeah, Tween does seem to be taking a little bit of a lead from the very get-go right here. Hopefully, he's trying to get that 10-pointer and give himself the momentum from the very start. As we see, Bren has made a mistake, but that did not stop him from coming back last time we saw him on stage. As of right now, though, Tween going into this final section, final left-hander, two, three car lengths ahead of Enner, and it does seem like he has enough exit speed. Only two more jumps, and Tween will take home the first 10 points. A great time there at that. The time Ener drove would be enough to win most rounds, but 59-89 for Tween is another level entirely. Very close with Alfie Bear, but Ener getting the upper hand on that. Yeah, I mean, this is also important for Ener. He really needs to push hard on this match if he wants to be able to get into the finals tomorrow. So I, th I think we're going to see him really, really show up now. And I'm very curious to see Tween now, because Tween as well, you know, in this match, he can kind of... Uh, relieve a bit of pressure. There's not so much on his shoulders. He has made it to playoffs. That is already done. And now, you know, you might start to think, if there's no nerves and it's just raw pace, it's, then, then what can he actually do? That time he drove in the last round was amazing. And it looks like we're seeing a different tween that isn't as affected by the pressure here. I think so too. And that's the thing, right? It, it's a lot of the game is in the mental. It's, it really comes down to, are you able to keep your cool? And once you feel safe, it is Ooh. a little bit easier. Mistake for Brandon here again in the downhill there. So that is now Tween in clear first, off in second this time. Ahead of Enner, but Enner might be able to make something happen in the ending. Looks like he's going to have to hope for a mistake, if anything. As, oh, the mistake comes through, and that is Enner getting a second place once again. Tween, though, just drove even faster. Tween, yeah, with an even faster 59.81, and Tween takes home a two out of two. Are we gonna see one of those uh, called Junior first match happenings where it's like a seven out of seven, do you think? I, I don't know, but like last match, Tween started with two crashes on this very map. Yeah. And you're seeing a complete flip here, he wins two rounds, and the, the pace is not just winning, it is like destruction. Can I, I think, yeah. can I ask you a question? Yep. If you were one of these players, and you had like, 15 minutes between each map. Would you sit down and practice those 15 minutes or would you relax and try to clear your head? I heard just earlier that like uh, they don't know what happened backstage, but Carl Jr. just 
came out way earlier than any other player and started signing autographs. Like, uh, he's taking the time to like stroll around the, <laughs> the, the stadium and saying hi to fans and stuff. Uh, clearing his set, I think that's a good strategy. I think if there's something that went wrong in the match that you felt like this is a mental barrier I need to get across, like whether it's like a turn you keep cra crashing or something, then get that out of your system. But apart from that, I would just take the time to get a break because it's so intense to play these mm. matches. So we see this round, Tween still ahead. Brand with a mistake, oh. Offy getting second here and winning against Ener. Important points for Offy there. But again, what Tween is fast. a 79! <laughs> that Tween is, is fast. so fast. What is Tween doing? Three out of three. That is an incredible performance right here. Whatever he did there backstage, I mean, it worked. Yeah, no, that is some magic coming through on the stage too, Engstein stuff. And uh, it's, I'm really happy to see this out of Tween Ooh. mistake there from Ren. As we, oh, and as, well, as well, unfortunate. Yeah. It's really not those mistakes you expect to make, but you're just maybe a little bit off the trajectory, and that happens. But I was just about to comment that Tween, he has had some down seasons, you know? He was in Trackmania Grand League, then got relegated there, and it felt like, you know, maybe that was the end of Tween's career. Then we saw him in World Cup this season, where we saw really good times on paper, and we saw him almost get through into the far parts of the playoffs. Now we see Tween dominating this tournament against the very players in that World Cup. So I feel like we're seeing Tween coming back. And that's the thing. The World Cup and the Trackmania Grand League all are very different than these types of maps that have some very, very difficult sections where this, these maps are more based on pure consistency and great driving on regular tracks. Here where Tween once again <laughs> gets 10 points with a 59. What an amazing performance. I mean, his average pace right now is like 59.8. I yeah. think that beats some of these guys' personal bests. But yeah, it's insane. And yeah, as you said, the four out of four, the best streak we've seen is seven wins in a row. So Tween is looking to try to beat that uh, if he keeps playing like this. But think about it. Tween, he is one of the most accoladed players in Trackmania history, but he has never quite gotten the biggest wins. So he has six World Cup finals on record, uh, four second places, two third places, but he has never actually lifted the trophy. But where better is it to do it than right here? After so many years too, you know, after competing at the top stage for 10 years, this is where you might be able to do it. And with the way he's playing, I think he's certainly a candidate to beat the likes of Carl Jr. But right now mm. he is getting uh, beaten in this round by Ener and Bran. They are slightly ahead, and they might be able to break the win streak. Anner, very far ahead now, three tenths almost. Can he hold off Bren here and get these 10 points? That would be great for Anner, who is in that battle for playoffs. Spot number eight, going for the jump, gets the landing, and that should be Anner with a hair, mm. taking the last 10 pointer. And that, all of these times are incredibly amazing. Like a low one minute times, uh, low 100. Yeah, and then think like, about beating that by 0.3. Yeah, that's the thing, right? It's the first time we haven't seen, or we we haven't seen a Tween get a 59. Yeah, like that's that's incredible. Out of out of five rounds, he got four 59s. Yeah, four 59s and a crash. But and if the hadn't crashed, maybe that was another yeah, that's 59. the thing, right? But uh, yeah, Tween with a really good start, 44 points there going out of the first map. Enner with 29, Afi with 22, and Bren with 20. Now, Bren is in the back here, but as we've seen before, uh, which happened as well last time he was here, he, uh, he can start slow, but then increase his pace. Yeah, and now this is an interesting map, I think. It's uh, Salmon, built by Kaisla, and Afi traditionally tends to do well on tracks built by this creator. The style that Kaisla goes for is often very transitional. The mm -hmm. water edges, the dirt, the grass, it's something that Offy tends to do really well. He had it in the World Cup on maps like Poolside and in the Trekmania Grand League season where he got second. So this could be a map where Offy, though he is in third right on the scoreboard, could certainly get some time pointers. Absolutely. I think this is going to be an incredibly tight map because I think right here multiple of the players have shown, at least during the day, that they have crazy good pace on this map. And Salmon, especially in the ending, can have some shakeups depending on what line you choose to go in for the final right-hander and getting the exit speed into that risky finish. Yeah, here you can see it in the warm-up. Anner going for a very different line from Afi there and does uh, win the warm-up, so giving himself some good omens here. Whereas Tween and Brand did crash in the warm-up, so see how they come back from that as the round begins here.
But 105 is the pace that we're looking for. And if you're tween, I don't know how far that goes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's the thing, right? Do you get multiple 105s again, like four out of five mm -hmm. 105s? Is that what's going to happen? You never know. Not, you never know with tween. We will see here on board with Offy for round one of the map to see if the Kai slot prediction falls through. He tends to do Ooh. well here. That's a mistake from Enter, clipping the inside corner now onto the sausage drift, trying to build up a lot of exit speed, but it goes quite wide compared to tween and Bran who are going to remain ahead. The exit speed does not pay off that much, and that is tween. Three tenths out of Offy, and Bran is able to keep up, but he is being, right now, outpaced ever so slightly. This could be an important round for Bren. He does need the points, and only one person is standing in front of him to get that 10-pointer, and that is Tween, and that's the one person that's very, very difficult to beat right now. Two car lengths ahead going into the final sausage turn before the final right-hander. Let's see if Tween sets it up well. Bren going a little bit slower. Is he going to be able to overtake in the ending? He needs something to happen to Tween. He needs a mistake to happen, and it does not happen. Tween <laughs> takes home 10 more points. And what is this pace, Danik? 105 5.5. The others are complimenting him right now, saying he's insane. And I mean, who can, where's this come from? This is a completely different level. That is incredibly fast. A 105 mid, I don't even know where that is on the lead. Is that, that has to be like close to world record, right? I believe the world record is in the 105.3 range, but it is very close to drive on such a technical map as this. With that many transitions, you know, things can go wrong on stage. You don't always hit the ideal line, but Tween is getting very close to that standard. And one thing that will happen is if you drive at this level, you start to feel momentum. With the momentum, you feel better, you play exactly. better, the nerves go away. You're just in the zone, and it's so hard to break that a stride. You could even see just how low he went for the transition onto the grass section that also gave him even more of a lead. And right here, he, he makes sure he doesn't drift too much because he wants to maintain that exit speed from the, from the dirt turns right here. So currently, still, Two car lengths ahead of the rest of the field, but this is a great race right now. Ooh. Everybody's so close to each other as we have a mistake coming in from Bren, I believe. But once again, players are only two tenths away from each other. Ooh, bit of a miss on the setup there for Offy. Means he's not going to have the speed to catch up to Enter here. That will be Tween winning another round and what a time. 105.43. We got to check the leaderboards here to get some info on the pace, but that is amazing. You can between. check the leaderboards right here as I just talk about the skill level that all these players are performing. Three out of the four players just drove a 105, which is the pace that we're looking for. Yeah. That is incredibly fast. So I have the stats here just to give you some insight into what that run from Tween was. He has the world record on this map with a 105.38. And he just drove a 105.43, so very close to the world record. Give it up for Tween here for an amazing run in the previous round. Amazing stuff what we're seeing out of the Slovakian player. Curious to see if he can keep that up. But right now, he is being matched by Afi and Bren out of the first half. Going into a little bit of a technical right-handed slide. Did look like Tween once again came out on top there. But Afi and Bren are right behind them. Bren trying to get a little bit more exit speed here on the dirt section. Not quite getting it. These players are driving exactly the same lines. Afi almost hitting the outside wall, had to adjust a little bit, unfortunately getting a little bit slower than the others because of it going into the last section before the finish. Tween sets up wider, Bren tries to do the same. Afi overtakes Bren, is he going to be able to take that second place? Bren with more exit speed, Bren taking home that second. Tween Ooh. actually making a mistake in the ending, but still gets first. Such a close round there between and just out another win, 74 points now to the 41 in second from Enner. It is destruction as foretold. And uh, curious how well he can keep this up. One thing to point out, which many people might not know, is that Tween plays on a keyboard. You get a lot of people wondering what device is best for Trackmania. Do they use a steering wheel? It's a car racing game. Do they use a controller? Tween just uses a keyboard and taps left arrow and right arrow to steer. And he's showing that you can be competitive here with basically any device. And that is one of the things that Trickmania is known for, that any device is competitive, especially on a setting like this where consistency is key. Yep, and we see a mistake from Alfie there who definitely didn't need that right now as he is in last on the standings. And also, it looks like Tween has fallen a little bit behind, although it is only points of a second, but 
an opportunity now for the French players, Enner and Bren, to get some important points, a 10-pointer here in the fight for second in the standings would do really well as Enner gets a better lineup and jumps and now gives a brand new opportunity to catch up. Wider setup here for Brad up to the last turn. Let's see who gets the most speed. Brent's trying to make that comeback happen. He's slightly faster Ooh. and he takes it. Oh, what a snipe there in the ending. And that's what we talked about, right? Setting up for that outside line gives you more exit speed in the ending, but you have such a short line that you're gonna be faster at. So is it, is it better, is it worse? And he clutched it out doing it. And even what the, the speed allowed him to do is it allowed him to go more in the right side of the finish. Absolutely. Because Ender didn't have the speed, he had to go more left, and that's where Bren really gained, is that last jump setup. So yeah. very important to recognize that, and 7,000 gives him uh, four more points. So, oh, Ooh. as we say that, though, that is a crash for Bren, who now will fall down in the round. You see uh, Enner actually going for a really inside line there compared to Tween, and it did get him a little bit closer, but he had such a tight turn, and that's gonna decrease his exit speed, but that doesn't matter because he does get closer and closer to Tween right now, and Enner really showing us that he is looking to overtake and looking to bring it back here. What a dirt line that was from Enner earlier to catch so much up on Tween, but here in the tech part you can see Tween's technical dominance showing through, getting clean turn after clean turn, very much on the inside of that, and pushing up the last turn here. This is another fast time for Tween, and another win in the books of 105.6. Amazing that stuff. That was a fast time, but he clipped the last ending block there, unfortunately slowing him down right before he hit the finish, but he was far enough ahead that it didn't matter in terms of position. He is quickly approaching 100 points already. 88 points right now to Enner's 53 in second. That is a dominating lead. It is, and if Tween wins this one, he will have a perfect ace for the day. Exactly, so how far can he go? And if he gets this last win, I think he's nearly guaranteed to not have to face Carl Jr. in the semis, which it does make things a little bit less impossible. It, it definitely takes off some of the pressure, I think. Yeah. But going into border, once again, this map is an incredible spectacle to behold. There's multiple quarter pipe jumps. There's an engine off block as well. There's some technical sections. I mean, this map honestly has it all. It really does. It, and they try to do this in the Trackmania maps now in competitions. In the past, it used to be only drifting maps. And then they were like, but there's more skills to Trackmania than drift, so they added dirt. And then they added grass. And now we have the obstacle parts, like these quarter pipe jumps. And you really have to master everything to be at the top level as the eSport continues to evolve. And here we see, you know, the product of that where it's just so many good players at so many different skills in the game. Absolutely. And that's the thing. A lot of players, including uh, me, specialize in specific sections of the game. And maybe you really like the grass. Maybe you really like ice, right? But if you want to compete at this level, if you want to compete, compete with these people, you need to be good at everything in the game. Yeah, and you know, nearly perfect at everything. Yeah, it's a, there. There's tiers to this, and this is just an, an extreme tier to be at. Here we go once again. Tween rapidly approaching another win. The others, though, fighting for survival. As Tween will make a small mistake in that first turn, but actually able to can carry on without much of a loss. No, it did look like it was very sketchy, but honestly, he only lost 0.2 and is still able to fight through. If he goes for a very low line here in the quarter pipe, he might still be able to overtake somebody. Go so low, almost not making it. Actually, might be clipping a little bit. Did look like he lost some speed. In the front right here, we have Bren, Afi, and Enner fighting it. 0.1 separating them, but Afi and Bren really close to each other as we enter the last section of the map. Here is where the rounds get decided because the quarter pipe jump into the finish can be tricky to nail perfectly. Offy's gonna try to go for a low jump, maybe take it away from Bran, but Bran gets that perfectly and he takes the time points. And do you remember last time we saw Bran on this map? Yeah, he was he, incredible. He just took win after win after win, and I think this is where we're gonna see Bren come back up into the standings. He just jumped up to second place. Let's see how close he can get to Tween. And he still has four more rounds of play. Like, this might be his best map in the map pack. 
I think that's definitely a possibility. We already have some mistakes in the start there, I was think. Was there two crashes yeah, in it, that very first quarter? Kind of versus, oh, and oh, another and the mistake. Third. So and this is interesting because now Afi is almost guaranteed a win, but the positions for the other uh, placements can still shake up uh, in the second half. I mean, when you first make a mistake, things are out of the books. You're not on your main line, and anything can happen from there. Absolutely, but taking a look at this, uh, Bren is actually closing in. Just gained another tenth of a second on Afi, and Bren could take this home if he maintains this very risky situation that he has. It seems like he pushes harder and harder on every turn. Afi might be going a little bit Ooh. safer, and there was a little bit of a mistake, and Bren now overtakes. Is he going to be able to make this last jump happen? Is he going to be able to take that first place home? And yes, he is! Bren what a with comeback. another ten points. I saw him out of the race for first yeah. there, but... He was able to collect himself, get back to great racing lines, and capitalize in that moment where Afi also made a mistake. And I think it's the thing where if you make a mistake early in a round, your mindset just goes to, well, I might as just risk everything. Go all in. Yeah, I might just go all in, because there's no reason not to, right? If you save from a mistake, you just get last place. You just save a last place. Yeah. There's no point. So yeah, good risk management there for Bren to recognize where he was at, what he had to do. Gets another 10, and he's now won both the first rounds on this map, as we see him get a bit of a worse line there than the others, and now they might have a chance to beat him. I don't know if you saw, but Enner's exit speed going into that engine off section was tremendous. And he pushed himself now all the way from the back to second place, fighting with Afi for first, actually really contending for it right here. But all of the players are actually so, so close, and Enner is going to have a tough time maintaining it, between almost landing on the side of his car, but he has full control of what is going on, and three players are driving on top of each other. It's all gonna be down to this final jump once again. Who can go the lowest here on the limbo jump once again? We have a snipe, Tween taking it home, Bren taking second place. Great race by all the players there. You have no room left for caution on that jump. You know, if I don't go for it, it is a guaranteed last, so. There we see Tween breaking the 100-point threshold, 16 points away from getting finalists and a chance at winning his fourth match on the day. He could possibly be getting a oh. mistake oh. there from Tween, hitting the wall. Then never mind what I just said, and we're going <laughs> <we're gonna> to continue <laughs> talking about Afi and Bren currently fighting for first and second. You could see the exit speed that they got into that engine off section was very, very similar, and they maintained pretty much the same amount the same amount of, uh, of speed, but you see Brent going a little bit lower, and that's going to propel him forward a car length ahead already as we get into the second section of the map. Yeah, here we actually saw Tween intentionally jump a little bit off the side of the ramp to reduce air time, and landing sideways is a very wild strategy to go for. Offie and Brent going for a bit more of traditional setup there, getting the speed still, but Offie committing too early for the turn. That is Enter now. Climbing up into second, and can Bren hold on to this for a third win on this map? Ooh, will do so. That that final jump right there, they always want to risk it, right? Yeah. Even if you're in first, you you gotta risk it. There's no other option. But luckily for Bren, we had two mistakes. Enner also did hit that final uh, that finish instead of hitting the finish line, and that saved him from losing his first place. There is a, a quote I really like from a uh, Trackmania pro called Koons, uh, ex-Trackmania pro, used to play competitively. And he used to say that you should always risk the finish because your opponents will. So there is no point holding back there and just getting sniped. You should always risk the finish Ooh. as Enner, not getting the drift around that corner, will drop down in the positions. And that is what Brendan did to secure that previous round here. Tween, without the early mistake, finds himself in first place because Bren has been closing the gap a little bit. It's now only 23 points, and Tween would like to hold him off, at least secure top spot in one bracket, mm. Bren. I don't know how he didn't crash there. It looked like he touched the corner, but he now finds himself in a battle with Afi for second place. The jump is coming up to the side of the round. Will Tween remain ahead? Oh! By 400s, he takes it. Bren in second, Afi third, and Enner in fourth. That was an incredibly close ending. And what Tween now has done is he's put him in a position where no matter what, he's going to get finalist position next round. And it's up to Bren, Enner, and Afi to deny him that victory. It is. They can try, but will they succeed, do you think, the way he's playing? 
I think they need a map that he isn't quite prepared for, but we saw him earlier today on this, and it, it's going to be tough on this map. Absolutely, but the other players, they have all practiced this just as much, and I think they have the option to do so. Sometimes, you know, you perform better under pressure. You do. You do. When you hear the crowd shout your name, when you hear the announcers talk about you excitedly, you see the lights, you know this is it when you have to deliver. You see some of the best Trackmania that we had as well in the World Cup, we saw that. So some players are able to convert all that pressure into uh, amazing gameplay, yeah. but it's also the ones that get crushed by it. I mean, I did the same when I went to school. I remember that I would uh, study for an exam kind of casually, but then 20 minutes before the exam started. <laughs> Honestly, that pressure just accumulated into me being a machine learning. When you know you have to, it hits Yeah, different. it's just instant. I could do anything. The things my brain can do on a school assignment when you have two hours left, yeah. it, it's unreached potential that but you don't see otherwise. It's like, it's like a part of the brain that only unlocks if you're like in deep trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's when it, that's when it hits you. So now we'll see if players like Uffie for survival here can unlock that part, can get that into going, because he needs it right now to get to playoffs tomorrow and fight for the trophy. Absolutely here. So we're going to see Tween still going for that first place as he wants to deny the other players as many points as possible. But no matter what, we're going to see Tween get into that finalist position after this round. And Bren is going to be looking to get as many points as possible, as fast as possible, as he is the closest to Tween's points. And let's just again remind people that this is one of the hardest maps to play. If we see mistakes here, it is to be expected. This is mighty precise to drive consistently, to thread your car in between all the obstacles and all the possible fall pits, like these edges that you can easily clip and lose speed on. And here, Ender is losing a bit of speed in the downhill. That is going to be him jumping out. And here, Tween as well. It was foretold, but Uffie has gotten through it unscathed. He's in first. I think Brent is in second. Let's see if Uffie can get the ending and get those 10 points. Very important here. Uffie secures it ahead of Bren, Ender in third, and Tween in fourth. If he can finish, you said it no matter what, but I don't think Tween reaches the finish here, and we're gonna have to wait and, one round. And I need to be careful saying no matter what, because apparently he hurt me, and he just wanted me to be wrong. Yep, <laughs> you got casters cursed yourself. Yep, it happens, it happens, but that is not gonna knock him off his chair. I'm sure that he will just sit down, re recalibrate his brain and then once again step out on top as he's already in the lead again. Yeah, Ender with a mistake in the start there, a bit hard to spot, but he did hit the wall ever so slightly and no, oh, off he in the thread between the pillars, makes a mistake too. Now Tween is given an opportunity unlike no other, only Bran really there to fight with him, but this should be a finalist position no matter what, Janik, I dare to say it, <laughs> and we'll see what Bran can do here, maybe he can get the 10 points ahead of Tween in the downhill, the tenth of a second separates the two. Can Brent find it in the uphill? Oh. Hits the inside corner. And I don't think it will matter too much as Ener might be too far, but the question is the speed here. Does Brent have enough speed for this next jump to get to the Ferrisky finish? He does, he will does. do so. Well played, well played. Now Bren is also uh, over 100 points. If he wins the next two matches, he is going to put himself in a finalist position as well, and that's definitely what he's looking to do because he needs the deny tween. Yeah, yeah, I think he does, and whatever the points might be, he finds himself at 11 right now going into this match. Out of 12 possible, that could have big implications for the semi-final bracket he would, if so, end up in, whether Absolutely. it's versus Pac or Carl Jr. or Coco, you know, great names that you would uh, maybe not like to play against, so we'll <laughs> see where he ends up. No matter what, the level is stacked, but... We'll see, oh, as Bren almost hits the pillar there, but the reward for the risk is that he goes up into first with a lot of speed onto the dirt. Now in the drop down shortcut here, see him still hold on to that position as all the players are here. And we see Tween actually in the back and it does look like the other players are going to, oh, unfortunately, enter with a mistake, but it does look like the other players are gonna be able to deny Tween that victory for now. Bren is in a strong lead right now. Afi behind, trying to see if he can push it up. Both of them getting a lot of exit speed, so they should have enough to get this jump down, and they do. Bren getting another 10 points. 
And, and that was a great time. 57.73 was a really nice time from Bren, close to the world record on the track. With that, he needs now one more win to get finalists, and then maybe with two in a row, he could just take the win. You never know. I mean, Bren has really showed us that in the final moments of a match like this, in the final moments where he needs to clutch it out, he does do it. Yeah, just to update you on the pace of that record, the world record on this map is a 57.65. So that was only eight hundredths away from the world record there from Braden. Very close to Less the limit on the map. Less than one? Yeah. Less than point one away but from the world record. But then he also made a mistake here in the next round by pushing a bit too much. And this gives Tween the chance of closing out match four on the day with four wins in a row. He's in the lead by two tenths of a second against Enner, the closest opponent who's had great struggles with this downhill here, sometimes losing the grip. This time he holds on, but is he gonna be able to catch up to the Slovakian player up ahead of him? He's trying his best. The gap remains one tenth in favor of Tween, who could win right here, right now, Mele. Okay. Be ready to he, see Tween in the playoffs. He makes it four out of four match victories for Tween. Incredible performance, and you'll love to see it, especially for Tween, such a compassionate guy who has been around in the Trackmania Esports scene for over a decade now. And he is coming back looking like one of the world elites after a couple of rough seasons. So amazing to see Tween winning the match here, getting 16 on the day. Now let's see who will join him in the playoffs as the battle ensues here, especially for Enner and Uppy right near that cutoff spot. Yes, right now all Bren needs to do is not get last and he will also put himself in a finalist position. But Enner and Afi are not too far behind in points. Uh, 90 and 88, so it's also going to be a very interesting battle to see who's going to get third and fourth. Because I think all the players are kind of on an even field right now. They really are, and I think with Tween out of the match, things uh, change in the dynamic. You know that winning rounds is now a lot more possible. The 10 pointers are up for grabs and it's more volatile. So here getting the points in his wake is incredibly important. Bren could secure the 10, even though he doesn't need it, just wants to deny the others. Going into the last corner, Uffy has a lot of speed to challenge him with it. Bren low on the jump, inside line, holds it down. Bren takes 10 here and gets finalists. I just want to take like a quick moment to appreciate how good Brent's ending was right there. He went so tight to the left-handed uphill before the ending, and then so tight in the final turn for, to get up the, up the jump there. That was crazy precise. And it's what it takes. It was only 600. Yeah. It's what it takes to do it. That was very, very impressive. As so we move on to Arctic, the one map with the ice slide in the map pack here is perhaps where they'll have to stop Bren. Alfie might need three points. Same for Enter, they might need the three points that second place rewards to get to playoffs. So we don't know the results right now of the likes of Daska, who was at six points, and also Mikuatro at six points before these matches yes. began. These are the players they're going up against. And when you don't know, you might as well try to get as many points as possible. So here, That's the thing, right? they have to stop him. They're, they're kind of in a position of, um, of vagueness. They don't know what's gonna happen. And that it's one of the scariest feelings is when you know that somebody else is trying their hardest in the back of the room, but you gotta show up right now because if you don't, if just one person does that just a little bit better than you, then you're out. Then you're out. Then you're not going to day two to play for the playoffs and it could just be one point that separates you from getting there. So this is the time to give it all. If you give it all you got and it's not enough, then you can't really leave with any regrets. But if you feel like you have any potential that you haven't yet been able to show, now you've got to use it. Indeed. And we've talked about this. The players, they have a tendency to play a little better under pressure because they know just what is on their shoulders. But also want to just take a quick look at Enron and Afi is at the exact same points right now. 94, so 94. Very close. Very close game. And Bren is... It's just one more victory away from taking home this second place. And I would assume that that's going to secure him into the playoffs. It certainly will. He's already at 11 points, which means I think he might have mathematically been in at the start of this. But it's about the position you get. It's about the confidence you have into the playoffs, how True. you feel it, when you get there against your uh, strongest opponents yet. So here, if you can close this out on this first final attempt, that would feel amazing, Bren getting up to the checkpoint, but Uffy is ahead of him 
onto the ice, and we see both players keep the grip. Offy holding onto the ice slide for longer. Oh, Brad, Ooh. able to avoid a crash there. But Offy does have the grips on this round, could get a 10 pointer here and keep the dream alive. He certainly could. It does look like he has a very strong chance of denying Brent that victory for now. And he does do the final section so beautifully right there, taking home 10 points for himself, jumping up to 104 points. Great run. And Able he... to beat Brent there. That's all you can ask for. <laughs> 10 points is secure. That's what you need to do, Brent right? Gets, uh, Ender gets to four as well, so he gives him a bit of uh, leeway should Brent close it out. This is what Alfie wants to see, but he's far from over the line. He still needs to do this several times over to get that second place. And the same goes for Anner. As for Bran here, it's just about getting that one run through. One thing I've noticed is that sometimes the players, they get so much extra speed out of the ice that they get a little bit of airtime on the sausage block right after. And if that happens, you slide out because you still have icy tires and you have like such a big disadvantage compared to your opponent. So we're gonna go up and see if anybody is gonna do that right now. Bren going for a little bit of a higher jump, making sure that he gets that line that he needs. And now we see the ice slide coming in from the players. Afi going really tight, trying to see if he can get closer to Bren. Nobody getting that airtime that I just talked about. And Bren is now in the lead, going so tight to the outside wall, really getting every single inch of that exit speed that he can. And oh. now he's pushing himself further and further ahead. Off it was a chance, could maybe get it, but it could also be that Bran right now, Ooh. especially with the crash, is going to go to the playoffs. Bran is through, taking a second place here, and overall 14 points on the day. An amazing performance from Bran. Can we hear it for Bran, everybody, as well? <laughs> Great stuff there. Coming through with two first places and two second places in his four matches, also a spectacular performance. And now it puts a lot of pressure on Ener and Offi, who at best, you know, Ener can get to eight points here, Offi can get to nine, I believe. Is that gonna hold? Is that gonna, be, gonna enough? be like, that's gonna be the tipping point. It's gotta be right around yeah. the, where you get mm -hmm. through or not. Ener with a mistake in this round does hit the wall, but if he wins the next one, then they will enter finalists at the same time. And that's the thing, right? So Afi, no matter what, is gonna be finalist in two, in two rounds, yep. right? Uh, so the only thing uh, Afi is fighting for right now is denying any of the points. Yep. Uh, which he does do successfully as of right now. He is he's really far ahead. He's about a second ahead right now. He can save the finish, which I, I assume he already knows, looking at the timers on his own screen. So I think Afi is going to go ahead and take home 10 points, putting himself up to 118 points. And that's very important there for Afi. It's to hold the lead down. If Ener wins that round, then they are guaranteed going into finals together. Here now, Ener's going to have to work for it. He's going to have to beat Afi. Because if Afi wins this next one, then he has one round where Ener cannot beat him. Yes, exactly. And that one round could be crucial because you have just one extra breathing room, like one extra relaxing round where you can be like, it's okay if I don't get first, but if I get first, I close it out, right? Yeah. So that's what's at play here. Ener knows it too. He knows I have to win this one and the next one. That is how he can go potentially to playoffs. He can do everything that he could in these matches now, right in these last two rounds. Up the quarter pipe jump. Does he have the approach to land as early as possible? He does, but so does Afi, and onto the ice, they're equal. Who gets the best exit speed here? Anner will cancel the ice slide. Is it enough to keep the grip in the downhill? Small slide, but it is enough to stay alive in the race, as Afi, though, will be able to take first place for now, with only two corners remaining, Janik. There was two different lines coming in from the players, oh. and Afi makes a mistake, and Anner is now all Double alone finalist. in the lead, and it looks like we're gonna be just having a double finalist situation, an amazing occurrence happens once again, and we see a one versus one, the final round of the day. Here we go. This could decide who goes to playoffs and who has to sit in the spectator seats tomorrow and watch it. This is for playing for the dream of winning the tournament right now. One might go through, one might be out. All in this one round. It all relies on the shoulders oh. of the players right now. Afi with a mistake in the start. 
he is fully stopped and it looks like Ener is gonna be very very far ahead right now looking at the checkpoint splits Ener goes through one checkpoint is he gonna go through another one he is multiple checkpoints ahead and it does look like it's gonna be really really hard for Avi to get back at this point it's going to be near impossible needs to see a mistake from Ener and Anner knew he had to win these two runs in a row, keeping the grip on the ice here and avoiding the slide out. It's hard to imagine what could go wrong, remaining perhaps only the tight left-right uh, drift in the end. But if not, this is Anner at least securing third here, and we'll have to see if it's enough to go through in the tournament. At least he's done what he could here after Tween and Brent secure their spots. But here into the finish, give it up for Anner, who will take third in the match, concluding the last group stage. Playing. Amazing performance by all of the players. A great match between Tween uh, and Bren as well, really fighting it out there to the very end. And absolutely crazy that Tween got four victories in a row. It's, it's something I think nobody expected, but every one of the players were saying, you gotta watch out for Tween. Yeah. They said that leading up on the day, and I think it's only first now that we see what they meant, because, uh, you know, if you compete against the time studies, I mean, you know the level, that's something Absolutely. else to get a new perspective. And the players did talk about it backstage, just the pace, they could see each other play, and there was a reason they were afraid of Tween. Absolutely. So let's now jump over to an interview with the man to hear his thoughts on the day. Tween, will you join us up on stage? So, Tween, what an amazing game being played here. You won four out of four matches. How does it feel? Like, the first thing I want to say, like, hi, mom. <laughs> 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 and uh, it feels great. Uh, I honestly didn't expect that, but uh, in the end, everything worked out my way. And, uh, yeah, I just, I just have to not let it get to my head, you know? Tomorrow is, like... A completely new day. I've already learned my painful lesson at the World Cup, where I had a very successful day one and then kind of bombed out and on day two. So yeah, that's my mentality right now. What about when we started the day off? What was your expectations of today? And I know you exceeded them, but where did you think you were going to place? Oh well, I during the time attack, I was very, uh, very like confident that I can be in the top eight at least. I ended up getting fourth. So uh, that helped me a lot. And uh, yeah, then during the matches, I just tried to uh, maybe uh, uh, second place each match was ba basically my goal. And I managed to exceed it like every time. So I'm extremely happy about that and just very satisfied with uh, like basically every match. One question for me as well. Now that you have this amazing performance on day one, what is going to be your preparation now for day two? How are you going to prepare yourself for the playoffs? Well, mentally, it's just going to be about uh, keeping my head down still. And uh, uh, the semifinals are just not going to ask me any questions, you know? Just, they're just going to happen very fast, so I have to be prepared for that. Uh, try to put in as much practice uh, just before the matches. And uh, other than that, have, have a nice dinner and uh, have a good breakfast. <laughs> that sounds amazing. Do you have anything you want to say to the fans at home? Oh, well, hi, mom, again. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for supporting me. I, I hope I put up some good matches, and uh, I'm very thankful for everyone who's here. Thank you. Can we have a big round of applause? Once again, congratulations to Tween and to the others. Feel free now to have a good rest of your day and prepare for yeah. the playoffs. You definitely deserve it.